Thank you, Joey. October the 10th, 2023, Board of Mayor and Alderman meeting. We're called to order and I'm going to call the roll. Vice Mayor? Here. Alderman Blanton? Here. Alderman Hanson? Here. Alderman Peterson? Here. Alderman Gordon? Present. Alderman Brown? Present. Alderman Potts? Present. And Alderman Baggett is not here tonight and the mayor is here also. Uh, here's the uh, what we're going to do tonight. Uh, we're honored to have uh, Pastor or Elder Haynes. John Haynes here with us tonight that's going to offer the invocation. But before I ask uh, uh, Elder Haynes to come up and offer our invocation, I'd like to uh, make a brief comment. And this uh, concerns Israel. Our hearts are broken by the terrorist attacks that took place in Israel over the weekend. At last count, I heard was around 900 people were killed and thousands more injured. What's even more tragic is that so many of these victims were innocent women and children and elderly folks, and many were kidnapped and many are still missing. Our city grieves with Israel and the Jewish people as they deal with the aftermath of those horrific events. While this took place thousands of miles away, it's still a reminder to us here in the United States and right here in Franklin that hatred and anti-Semitism still exist in our world. We've worked hard to be a community where people of faith are welcome and to promote unity in our community. We want to be clear that our city will not tolerate anti-Semitism or anything that fosters hatred or violence against any group because of their religious beliefs or ethnicity. As mayor, I call upon all of the citizens of Franklin to join me in praying for the nation of Israel in the days ahead. May we also be a source of strength and encouragement to the Jewish people in our community during this time. And may peace be upon Israel and their, the entire world. I would ask you to stand <coughs> for a moment of silence, and then I would ask uh, Elder Haynes if he would come come forward for the invocation. So join me in a moment of silence for Israel. Thank you. Elder Haynes. Elder Haynes is from Burns Tabernacle Church. Please remain standing. So how much time did you say I had? <laughs> <laughs> you never tell a preacher how much time you have, but the Thank police you. are here to help you <laughs> if you need help. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Thank you, sir. Thanks for having me. Let us bow. Uh, gracious God, our Heavenly Father, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and also the God and the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Creator of all mankind, heaven and earth. We come before you uh, this evening giving you much thanks for all that you have rendered unto us from our early existence of time down to this very present moment. We thank you for our last night's lying down and truly we thank you for how you watched over us as we slept and as we did slumber through the night. And we thank you that you dispatched your angels to encamp around our bedsides. And we thank you for this morning's early rising. Thank you for health and strength, usage of our limbs, right activities of these, our minds. And now, Father, we come asking that you will look within the hearts and minds and spirits of these, your people, and those things that you find that's not liking mm -hmm. until you will, we ask that you would remove it. For we realize that we are sinners saved by your grace through faith in your son, Jesus, who is our Christ, who did for us what we wasn't able to do for ourselves. And as we call upon your holy and your divine name, we ask for your blessings upon uh, this meeting here tonight. Bless the mayor for much good. We pray unto thee and to bless his board at the same time. But we ask mostly that you would bless each and every person that's here under the sound of my voice. Strengthen us in our weak places. Build us up where we might be all torn down. Keep our minds placed on the business at hand and let us let us have respect for one another. We need you now. We can't do without you. 
We ask that you would remember those in Israel, but not only there, but around this whole wide world. We realize that you have the whole world in the hollow of your hand. Bless us now, and we'll give you all praise, honor, and glory. It's in the mighty name of your son, Jesus, who is our Christ, that we pray. Amen. 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 If you'll remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The next item on the agenda is an opportunity for citizens to make comments. I have two speaker cards. And for items not on the agenda, uh, people. First one is John Schroer, and the second one is Gary S Carrie Scott. So I'd ask them to come up, and I'll give you each two minutes. Board of Mayor and Alderman, I'm John Schroer, and I live at 512 Boyd Mill Avenue. I lived in Franklin for 48 years and have served the citizens of Franklin and Tennessee for 29 continuous years. I was chairman of the Franklin Special <clears throat> School District, mayor of Franklin, commissioner of the <clears throat> Tennessee Department of Transportation, a member of Governor Hazen's cabinet, an alderman, and currently I'm serving as the chair of the Franklin Transit Authority. In 2022, I was asked by the Board of Mayor and Alderman to serve the remaining at-large seat of Pearl Bransford after her untimely death which I did with great pride and humility. I served with Pearl for 13 years on the Franklin Special School District Board and four years on Bowman. My wife and I became great friends with Pearl and her family during those 17 years. It was an honor to sit in the very chair that she sat in. Ms. Hansen, you are now sitting in that very same chair. When you decided to run for Alderman, you sat in my house and told me and my wife that Pearl had basically anointed you to take her seat. I didn't believe it then, and I certainly don't believe it now. The campaign you're running has brought disgrace to the state of Tennessee, the city of Franklin, Boma, and the chair that you are currently sitting in. But even worse, you have disgraced the name and service of my friend, Pearl Bransford. Ms. Hanson, I knew Pearl Bransford and you are no Pearl Bransford. <clears throat> Mr. Scott. Board of Mayor and Alderman, I would like to, res I would respectfully like to offer a rebuke to the recent character claims of racial divisiveness by Gabrielle Hansen, by some members of the public in this very forum during the last meeting on tw September 26th. I don't ascribe to those attributes of Alderman Hansen. I can offer a couple of examples to the contrary. Alderman Hansen, along with the African American Heritage Society, has co-hosted community gatherings in the form of potluck dinners in which members of both the African American and white communities <coughs> engaged in conversation and friendship largely encouraged and put together by Alderman Hansen. In 2022, when the city plans for the annual observance of Juneteenth changed and it became financially implausible for the Franklin African American Society to participate, Alderman Hansen participated and encouraged all to visit the open house festivities, which were held at the McLemore House on the very day of the holiday. Many attended of both races, including myself, and were treated to an extraordinary educational history of the property. When the city turned over the Juneteenth observances to another group in 2022, in place of events held traditionally in the city by Alma McLemore's organization, yes, Alderman Hansen expressed concern about possible vandalism and civil unrest in our downtown corridor. Out by outside groups. This was amid the racial tension that have been taking place in city since <coughs> 2020. 
and we were in the shadows of a larger city, Nashville. These were all in the interests of public safety. I repeat, public safety for all citizens. <clears throat> Mayor, Mayor, Board, and Aldermen, I thank you for your time. Mr. Mayor, I did have a late card, if you're willing okay, to accept please. it. <clears throat> <clears throat> George Uribe, um, non-agenda item, please, sir. Thank you, sir. My name is George Uribe, and uh, at the last city council meeting, Alderman Hansen had security guards that were identified as Nazis, and a literal Nazi means that you want to kill Jewish people. And so in light of Israel and in light of the fact that you had people defending you as security who are Nazis, Will you take this opportunity to say that you are against Nazism and that you are opposed to what they believe? Uh, we don't respond to public comment, uh, but please continue. Thank you. Well, I think the community <clears throat> is better together. We're a diversified community. We love each other. We um, encourage each other. And uh, Alderman Hanson has been a disgrace to our community. I think that it's time for the people to understand that not only has she brought di di divisiveness to our community, but on the very month where Israel was bombed and people were slaughtered, she had people defending her as security who identify as Nazis. And a Nazi means that you want Jewish people dead. And that is the kind of person you are unless you denounce it. And we can do better than that in the city of Franklin. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, are there any communications from the Williamson County Commission? Seeing none, we'll go to the minutes of the September 26, 2023 work session and September 26, 23 Board of Mayor and Alderman meeting. Is there a motion? Move for approval. Second. Second by Alderman Peterson. Any discussion, additions, corrections? Seeing none, ready to vote. Vice Mayor? Yes. Alderman Blanton? Yes. Alderman Hansen? Yes. Alderman Peterson? Yes. Alderman Berger? Yes. Alderman Brown? Yes. Alderman Potts? Yes. Passes unanimously. We'll now go to um, recognitions. Uh, <coughs> I have no recognitions. Uh, well, I do think there is a recognition. Mr. Stuckey wanted to make a recognition. I just want to make one highlight. Uh, this past week, as a part of the uh, um, International City County Management Association Conference. It was held in Austin, Texas. The City of Franklin received what's called a Voice of the People Award. And this is the only award of its kind where uh, you merge data collection and analytics with the opinion surveys that you do of your citizens. And the Franklin has participated in some form of, nat of uh, citizen survey since 2012. And the last three times we've, we've conducted our survey, we've used an instrument called the National Citizen Survey, which several hundred cities across the country use and gives us a good comparative point. And it's, it's essentially our opportunity to ask our citizens, how are we doing? And we gather public opinion and we use that public opinion to help guide community decision making. In each of the times we've used the National Citizen Survey, the City of Franklin has received what's called a Voice of the People Award. Uh, this past cycle, this past year was no exception. We received an award in the category of local economy that speaks to the perception of our citizens, the opinion of our citizens about the strength and quality of our local economy. Uh, we were selected as the only award winner in that category. So we're very pleased at that. I want to recognize our team who works on it. It is a team effort, but uh, Michael Walters Young helps lead that effort uh, when we go and, and, and uh, seek that guidance and feedback from our citizens. And it's an honor that that uh, was recognized by our peers and by folks who conduct this survey in cities across this country. So congratulations to our team. Congratulations to our community for this recognition. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor? Uh, I have uh, several of the aldermen that had uh, uh, reports uh, they wanted to make, and I'll start off with... Uh, I have one to follow for Eric first, please. Please. Yeah, okay. Thank I you. Too. But <laughs> my apologies. Um, uh, at this same uh, meeting or convention, 
uh, what our very humble uh, city administrator did not share with all of us that are here in the room or at home watching is that our Eric Stuckey, our City of Franklin City Administrator, was sworn in as the Vice President representing the Southeast region of the United States for the International City County Management Association Executive Board. He'll be serving a three-year volunteer unpaid term in this essential <laughs> role. He was nominated by his fellow association members across the Southeast and elected by the worldwide membership. So congratulations. Oh, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. And thank you to the board for your support. I, I talked to each of you at the end of last year that I was thinking about uh, that opportunity and, and every one of you were, were very supportive and I appreciate the opportunity to continue to serve our, our, our community but serve uh, folks who provide public service across the world and at the local government level. So thank you for that opportunity. Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> ditto, and that's exactly what I wanted to say. I want to make sure we pointed that out, but I have a word for Eric. Eric, we are so proud of you, and we're so happy that you're representing uh, not only the ICMA, but our city as well. I have one word. Do not let them steal you away. <laughs> because we know people approach you all the time. And um, I just really thank you for, I was on that original committee uh, with John Shore when we um, hired you. And it's been stellar. John, you were absolutely right. Thank you. Uh, you said, I found the guy. And <laughs> when they brought the, the last three applicants in, it was just, we knew that you had the skill sets and the love. And you've, you've had the love for Franklin since you've been here. And I really appreciate you and your family. Uh, and that was one thing that John said. They have a young family. They will be invested in our community. And you were so invested in our community. And you and Lisa and the kids have been amazing. And we just thank you very much for that. Thank you. It's a team effort. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You're going to make him cry. I know. No. I will. I try. <laughs> not hard to do. <laughs> All right. I think we have three miscellaneous reports, my understanding. One from uh, Alderman Brown, then one followed by Alderman Burger, and then one followed by Alderman Potts. I yes, went too. Oh. And Alderman Blanton. I was un okay. unaware. Yes. So, got gotcha. your last. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mayor. Residents of Franklin. Mm -hmm. Two weeks ago, this board contemplated a former, formal censure of Alderman Hansen due to ethical concerns surrounding a letter she sent to BNA. I chose to abstain from that discussion given my position on the board of the African American Heritage Society, an organization mentioned in Alderman Hansen's letter. As we know, she chose to sue the city government that she currently represents over that matter. However, recent events compel me to revisit the issue of censure. If it were allowed procedurally, I'd propose a censure tonight not for the previously discussed ethical violations from which I've abstained, her insensitivities towards families that have experienced loss, either due to violence or disease, or even for her constant lies and hypocrisy, but for reasons that are far more hurtful, incendiary, and frankly, dangerous to our city. Our procedural guidelines based on new state law passed on July 1st demand a 48 hour notice to introduce a matter to the agenda. So while I can't bring this up for vote tonight, I'm asking our staff to add it to our November 14th meeting. I would even consider a special session should this board decide to do that. Regardless of Alderman Hansen's status on that date, I believe addressing her actions is paramount and I intend to vote for censure on this matter when she, whether she is in office or not. Recently, Alderman Hansen made a troubling decision to escort self-avowed Nazis and white supremacists into our city hall. This happened during a public forum for residents and media engaging in our democratic process. We've learned from credible sources over the past week about her collaboration with these figures. One of those sources is the admitted Nazi leader himself, Brad Lewis. Mr. Lewis stated unequivocally that Alderman Hansen wanted their help and invited them to engage. This isn't the media or the left making this claim. This truth is coming directly from the source. Moreover, Alderman Hansen shared a discussion that contained a particularly alarming phrase in her social media. The phrase, there is no political solution, appeared in a chat with a Tennessee active club 
a chat that apparently Alderman Hansen was included in. This phrase isn't merely a statement. It's a dangerous rhetoric associated with extremist ideologies. It is an acceleration of the white power movement. Make no mistake, it is a call for violence. Alderman Hansen may not have written that phrase, but her sharing it publicly, specifically including that screenshot, is proselytizing and advancing that call for violence. To further underscore the gravity of the situation being created here, at a meet and greet this weekend, a resident questioned Alderman Hansen about threats that had been made on this resident's life by the Tennessee Active Club. Alderman Hansen requested that the resident show her a screenshot of the threat and proceeded to take a picture of her phone screen. That image, which only lives on the phone of the Hansen campaign, ended up being shared later by the Tennessee Active Club with a renewed threat to silence this resident. As unbelievable as this is, it is a fact that a renewed threat was amplified by the club using information sourced directly from Alderman Hansen's campaign. There is no other way for them to have received that exact image. Veiled or not so veiled threats to end someone's life simply because they are engaging in a civic process, engaged in our local election, it is not aldermanic, it is not mayoral, and it is certainly not Christian. The use of violence and intimidation, especially against civilians in the pursuit of political aims, inviting divisive entities into our city and democratic process, creating fear and intimidation, spreading volatile messages, and potentially facilitating threats to our community members is beyond the pale. This is Franklin, Tennessee, a beacon of American values distinct from the political ugliness of Washington, D.C., Chicago, and California. Some might argue that measures such as a censure are unprecedented. Indeed, they are, but only because we've never faced such profound and egregious behaviors from within our city's leadership. This isn't media speculation. This isn't fake news. These are verifiable actions and words seen on vi video, clearly attributable and verified by the original sources that deviate from the values we uphold as a city. To be silent is to be complicit. To not take action is to allow this behavior to root. We cannot allow this kind of hate to take hold in Franklin or else we have lost everything. Lastly, on the topic of our current election, I know that some of you are disappointed in the Pride Festival vote. The decision was taken to ensure the city's welfare. Just this week, Murfreesboro faced legal ramifications for allegedly infringing on constitutional rights. But to be clear, that six-hour private event in the park is not an even trade at all for four years of hate and lies. I beg of you, don't let hate root itself in our city, or we may never be able to eradicate it. Enough is enough. Finally, to our mayor, your steadfast leadership has maintained Franklin's reputation as a city of prosperity and harmony, and my gratitude for your service deepens with every passing day. Thank you. <coughs> Alderman Berger. <coughs> well, <coughs> two weeks ago, I spoke off the cuff, and I was very emotional. Um, I don't think I'm any less emotional tonight and disturbed, and my spirit is stirred. Thank you, Matt, for those words. <clears throat> it gives us no pleasure of speaking tonight at all. But if we do not speak up against injustice, against wrong behavior, and against division, we're complicit in its continuation. So, in preparing a few marks for this evening, I thought about some profound words of wisdom. I say the most profound wisdom can be found in the Word of God. All true wisdom comes from God and God's truth and will always prevail in the end, whether we acknowledge it or not, whether we speak it or not, or whether we live it or not. But I'm not going to say much more about that <clears throat> because during this campaign, four candidates have chosen to wear Jesus on their campaign sleeves to shout out bold statements and I don't know possibly to get votes proclaiming hey I'm a Christian I don't know 
Rather than living their faith, exhibiting the fruits of the Holy Spirit and letting God shine through how they conduct themselves, how they conduct their campaigns, the messages and behaviors and actions they support or they come against. The community has yet to hear from any of these candidates speak out, except the lone exception is Greg Caesar who posted a response and joined the seven aldermen and the mayor in denouncing the presence and actions of individuals who identified themselves as neo-Nazi and self-admitted supporters of Gabrielle Hansen. In public statements, Alderman Hansen has denied that she quoted that she that she, she has denied that she quote hired the group that showed up at the forum the other night at City Hall, nor did I ask them to participate in security for the event. End of quote. The word hire is just word semantics. <clears throat> A member of the group who described himself online as the actual literal Nazi, quote unquote, has shown on a video last week telling the different story. He quotes, I'm tired of being a lackey and a cannon, a cannon fodder for, politic, for politicians that you know, you, they want your help, and then when the heat gets turned up on them, then they're going to throw you under the bus, Lewis told podcasters. He said, if you want our help, we'll help you, but don't just throw us under the bus if the heat gets turned up a little bit. I saw this with my own eyes at that forum. Uh, they were escort in and out of this building. <clears throat> Two weeks ago, I said I was greatly grieved that we, the board, should let the voter, but I said I was greatly grieved, but we should let the voters decide since we were in the last weeks of the election. If this had not been an election time, I can guarantee you, Alderman Hansen, we would not be doing this. We would have already been sent, you would already have been censured by this board maybe multiple times. And again, like I said last time, if it were me here in the hot seat, I hope and pray my board members would pull me into line. The community outcry for BOMA to address Alderman Hans's egregious actions through censure has been great. We've all heard from you, from the community. But we as a board have been cautious not to use this opportunity during this election in order to avoid being unjustly accused or accused as supporting or harming anyone's campaign. We've been cautious. The other aldermen and I and our entire community and way beyond now have heard your words, seen <coughs> your actions and deeds, whether it be from your pronouncement of I know what happened during the Covenant murders through 30 minutes after it happened, or even tarnishing the name of the headmaster, or who was a friend many, to many of us here on this board, to the letter to BNA, quote, I don't want my tax dollars or fees off plane tickets going to radical agendas either. I'm floored that your board would approve of allocating money in this way, these citizens are prepared to post publicly and link this support to each and every board member along with their business interests so the public will know that the board of BNA is financially supporting of who they're supporting and in agreement with radical social justice agendas in town where they literally should have no voice, unquote. Another, at the end of the quote, it is the mission of B, is it the mission, she asked, is it the mission of BNA to support radical agendas that are dividing our, our county and our country and our city? She said dividing our country to be quote, to be accurate. This is the question I guess our citizens would like to have answered. Alderman Hansen, I think the question our board and our community want answered from you, is it your mission to divide our city? Because you're doing a bang up job of it right now, dividing our community. I've had numerous people write me and tell me that we could have avoided all of this division if only the mayor had voted for the Franklin Pride application approval. Don't I wish that it was that simple? 
that cut and dry. That conclusion is not supported by all the facts as we know it now. The mayor and I were on opposite ends of that vote, but I certainly understand your vote a lot better, Mr. Mayor, and I do respect it, and we will work to make sure our community is secure with good, solid community values. People will have their freedoms intact, but they will be towing the mark of community decency. This division started about six months after you were seated on the board. I chose to ignore it, not wanting to think ill of you because I liked you. You were a fellow board member and we got involved, you got involved. You took your role seriously. You did great work on sister cities, etc. You also went to bat and championed some very important issues that were not just quite right, like the rezoning of a church property and the over-regulation of gathering for people for prayer on the square. I was on the same page as you, and so were all these other aldermen, but soon it seemed there was something under every rock. The Covenant murders, the Juneteenth sponsorship issues, then the BNA letter, then the Middle Eight development. Alderman Peterson voted against it, and yet she has not thrown people under the bus and used it as a political tool for her campaign. That's called integrity. Thank you, Alderman Peterson. Then it was on to the next thing, suing the Ethics Commission and the board members because you didn't like the ruling. May I remind us all that distinguished people sat on that board and currently <coughs> sit on that board. A retired judge heads that board. It's comprised of respected professional people in our community, an ordained pastor and a former mayor. And these are all people we know I guess you can call them all our personal friends, but this vote, this board voted unanimously to put them on that commission. Bottom line again, I say, if this was not an election time, <clears throat> things would be looking very different. We're not afraid as a board to speak out, to confront wrong, but we will also not be used as a tool. Maybe we've been too quiet, but the truth is always quiet. Lies are always loud. When individuals fail to speak out against inappropriate behavior, they risk undermining the very values that bind our community together. And our community is strong, regardless of what people hear on the national media and regardless of a person. My board members and I will not fail to speak out. We're embarrassed for our city and our community. But we did not, we did not bring this. You did. I don't know how, under your leadership, our city can continue to be a shining city <coughs> on the hill. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Alderman Potts or Alderman Blanton? Jason. Thank you, sir. Uh, first, thank you, Alderman Brown, and uh, also thank you, Alderman Berger, for your words of leadership, which is focused on Franklin's best interest. Uh, to ensure that the public is aware, last week a public statement was released from Mayor Moore and seven of the eight aldermen. This is that statement. October 4th, 2023, dear Franklin residents. We, the Board of Mayor and Aldermen, are deeply concerned and disturbed by the events that unfolded at <coughs> Monday night's candidate forum for the upcoming city election. Individuals identifying themselves as neo-Nazis and self-admitted supporters of Gabrielle Hansen threatened both our citizens and members of our media during and after this important civic event. Our city has always prided itself on fostering a welcoming environment for all citizens. We firmly believe that our city's strength and success is built upon the contributions of a diverse citizenry made up of people from all walks of life, backgrounds, and beliefs. We will not tolerate any form of hatred, 
intimidation, or violence directed at our residents, media representatives, or anyone else attending or participating in the democratic process. We encourage everyone to participate actively in our democracy, attend public forums, vote, and engage in constructive dialogue to address the issues that matter most to our city. Together, we can ensure that our city continues to be one of the best cities in the country to live, work, play, worship, and express one's political positions while respecting others. Finally, we encourage all candidates running, including Ms. Hansen, Patrick George, Gary Moore, and Jeff Feldman, as well as BK Muvalov and Greg Caesar to join us in denouncing the actions and organizations as well. We are confident that Franklin will stand together to ensure that our city remains a place where all residents can thrive and participate in the democratic process without fear of intimidation or intimidation. That is signed by Ken Moore, Mayor, Bev Berger, Alderman Ward 1, Matt Brown, Alderman Ward 2, Jason Potts, Alderman Ward 3, Patrick Baggett, Alderman Ward 4, Clyde Barnhill, Alderman at Large, Brandy Blanton, Alderman at Large, and Ann Peterson, Alderman at Large. The city recorder will attach this statement to tonight's meeting minutes. As I start my statement, I would like to share how much I appreciate the hard work and passion that Mayor Moore, my fellow Alderman, City of Franklin leadership, and all City of Franklin team members invest into providing excellence to our citizens every day. To level set my statement, I'm going to provide the Franklin Municipal Code Chapter 8, Section 1-808, Use of Position or Authority, Subsection 2, Second Sentence. No officer shall intimidate, threaten, coerce, discriminate against, or give the appearance of or attempt to intimidate, threaten, coerce, or discriminate against any employee for the purpose of interfering with that person's freedom of choice in the regular discharge of official duties. Tonight I'm speaking on behalf of many constituents of Ward 3 that have reached out to me. Franklin has been recognized as an all-American city, <clears throat> a city that at its essence is known for its warmth, its love, its friendliness, its charm, and its decency. However, if anyone visited Franklin, Franklin last week, would they have described our community that way? I fear not. I fear that they'd go home and tell their friends and their family quite the opposite. Unfortunately, this actually happened last week. A businessman who was staying at a downtown Franklin hotel was walking down the historic heart of our city after eating dinner. When another person passed him on the street and looked him square in the eye and said, white power. The visitor to our city stopped in his tracks, looked at the man again, at which point the man said again, white power. Is that the Franklin any of us want to live in? No. That same night, a 14-year Franklin resident, wife and mom to two children, attended Monday night's public candidate forum in this very chamber. After the candidate forum, she walked into the lobby and felt fear of her own personal well-being. She said, Alderman Potts, for the first time ever in Franklin, I asked someone to walk me to my car. I didn't feel safe. She went on to share, I've never felt that way in downtown Franklin. It broke my heart. I'm tearing up just sharing it, sharing it to you now, she said. Her presence, her insensitivity, harshness has brought an environment that made my home of 14 years not feel safe to me. I was devastated of all that we have invested and the incredible people that have made Franklin so desirable are being thrown under the bus and misrepresented. She wraps up by saying, I was scared. 
Is that the Franklin so many worked hard to build over more than the past two centuries? Is that the Franklin that so many invested in preserving over the decades? Is that the Franklin that so many residents chose to move to in recent years? No, no, and no. What's been going on here lately has to stop, and it has to stop now. The environment that all of us have had to endure recently is truly a concerning state of affairs. Fear and intimidation and, in, and hatred have no home in Franklin. Silence and inaction is a choice with severe consequences that can forever change the character of Franklin, which is deeply rooted in love and concern for our families and neighbors. The local, regional, national, and now international news of the last few weeks regarding controversies that surrounded Alderman Hansen and another candidate is not who we are as a community. Franklin is better than this. No one could have seen this embarrassment that we would have to suffer through as a community because of you. A house divided against itself cannot stand. And this house, our beloved city of Franklin, will slowly erode away if we don't stop this nonsense now. Franklin's residents are smart and history has proven that we see through the lies and the ignorance. Each of us knows this, and each of us has a civic responsibility to do so, especially if we're active in a politi political organization, running for office, or holding an elected office. There is no place for threats, extortion, or intimidation <clears throat> against citizens or public officials at all. We should be uniting Franklin, not dividing it with misinformation, redirection, and intimidation. Forty years ago, Ronald Reagan said, evil is powerless if good are unafraid. I am not afraid. Franklin is not afraid. And thousands of years before that, King Solomon wrote, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Every candidate for our Every candidate for our office and our city of Franklin has a moral responsibility to always denounce all of the actions that have brought this negative attention to Franklin. We are resilient. We're a community that stands together against adversity. We will not be intimidated by you or those that wish to suppress our voices or negatively change our great city of Franklin. Well, first of all, <clears throat> I want to thank you all for speaking up, and I concur with your words. Um, I'm not typically one to write things down because that's not my style, but I think this is so important. I think we're all emotionally raw. I think we also are just still shaking our heads of how did we get here? How did we get here? And I look at you with your straight face, and, and I bless your heart. Um, <laughs> I, I have these few things that I need to say. So first, at our last BOMA meeting, several supporters of Alderman Hansen spoke to us and made untrue and misleading statements about our BOMA-appointed Ethics Commission mm -hmm. and Mayor Moore. Except for Alderman Berger, none of the rest of us called them out for that, and I absolutely regret that I did not speak up then, but I am speaking up now. I have realized that if you continue to let bad behavior continue, then you're just as guilty. Mm -hmm. Y'all used a different word, but it's interesting the thread mm -hmm. of commonality that's running through our words. Mm -hmm. The members of the Ethics Commission deserve our support. Mm -hmm. They are all honorable members of our community who at our request, our request, have agreed to serve our city. They are women and men who have impeccable integrity and who have served our city in many ways for many years. The Ethics Commission is a long-standing commission whose members are appointed and approved by BOMA. It is not and has never been a secret commission appointed by the mayor. Mm -hmm. It has been in existence since 2007 and thankfully until recently has, had not, has not had much to do. 
They met four times since their inception, 2007. The last time was February of 2008. Our city attorney, Shauna Billingsley, as part of her yearly goals, felt it was important to reconstitute this commission as the ethics officer and potential, can potential candidates were interviewed throughout that year. That's in 2022. In December, BOMA unanimously approved the Ethics Commission slate, including you. The statements made at our BOMA meeting last month by certain supporters of Alderman Hansen were outrageous and should be condemned again. We on BOMA have a duty to call out these untruths. It was interesting to me to note that when the Ethics Commission dismissed ethic charges against Alderman Hansen in May, none of Alderman Hansen's supporters complained about the Ethics Commission or its actions. Mm -hmm. Only after a second complaint was filed and the Ethics Commission found that Alderman Hansen violated our ethics code did we hear complaints. In conclusion, let me say that members of our Ethics Commission have acted with integrity at all times and I, for one, am thankful that we have such honorable women and men willing to serve our community. Second statement I would like to make is about the self-proclaimed Nazi faction that showed up to support, as they said, to protect Alderman Hansen at the candidate forum held at City Hall. I want to point out that except to say she did not hire them, also Alderman Hansen has not condemned this group, nor has she said that they are not welcome here. We all saw the pictures of this group, including one person who had his face covered up by what looked like a ski mask patrolling each of the entrances and exits to City Hall. The intended effect of this group was to bully and intimidate and to push forward its self-proclaimed hate-filled ideology. All of us on BOMA, except Alderman Hansen, have condemned these actions and there is no place in Franklin for this type of conduct. Obviously, my words are redundant. But I think if nothing else that should drive home the fact that your current leadership is in in unity about what we will and will not tolerate tolerate in our community. This is not the Franklin, Tennessee that drove people here and it's not the one that was created by the leadership in this community over the last several decades, including you, John Schroer. Um, it's embarrassing to end up on HBO, to end up on MSNBC, and not for the good stuff. And it's all traced down to one source. So I think that I, I know that when we are able to provide a legal censure motion, I will definitely um, support that because I think we need to make a stand. Um, we fight for our citizens every day in this role. We can't stop now. And I get a statement now. Everybody. And of course the citizens of Franklin don't deserve this, but this is the old adage of you reap what you sow. You've planted seeds for years and years against our citizens and they're coming to harvest. This is what the citizens of Franklin are getting because of bad decisions, because of attacks on a church, because attacks on a Latino church, because attacks on a worship minister in our square and ultimately a man who was arrested in our parks for wearing a Jesus shirt and expressing his Christianity and his love for Christ. Those things are called spiritual repercussions and they do come back to you. And it's easy to shift all the blame. I just happened to arrive at a time where everything was starting to crumble. And that's where we are today is in a community who's been built on a massive PR machine, but a community who is so focused on the past, it's hard to deal with the present. A community who's left many voices out to dry with a set of rules for different tiers of individuals in our community. We've had this auditorium packed with hundreds of people whose voices were never heard because our leadership fell on deaf ears of their cries. But I have nothing else to say other than this is exactly the seeds that you sowed and your harvest is now here. And they were here because they are an anti-Antifa group and the dark web is showing massive Antifa activity with the state Antifa leader that lives about 15 minutes from Franklin, Tennessee. 
and that's why they came out. And I don't denounce any of my clients. I have a black client, a lesbian client, a Muslim client. I have Brad Lewis as a client. I'm a realtor. I'm not going to denounce anybody their right to be whatever it is that they want to be, whether I agree with what they do in their personal life or not. So when they wanted to come, because they were concerned about what they saw on the dark web, I said, please do not make us seen if you're going to come. If they want to support <coughs> you in your reelection, if they want to support me, that is their right. And we don't discriminate in this community against anyone. Never did they lay a hand on anyone and they were very respectful while they were here. Just because someone looks different does not mean you discriminate against that individual. Thank you. Uh, we'll now go to the consent Mr. agenda and all items are in the oh, oh, I'm sorry, Alderman Peters. I just wanted to say, can't hear you. Okay. I just wanted to say I appreciate all your comments. Hmm. Mayor. Vice and, Mayor. And I uh, also want to say I appreciate the comments. And, and, and you got to speak in. They can't hear you. Can. And, Go ahead. You know, early on, I didn't see a great deal. I mean, I may have not saw through what some of these things are here. I don't think there's any. I don't think there's any way that any of us, certainly not me, I've been through more than one election. I don't <laughs> think I've been through about eleven of them, and certainly this is the most uh, divisive, uh, the most troubling election that we've been through. Mm -hmm. And I even went through one where I tied. Mm -hmm. And the board, through their generosity, picked the other person. So I didn't serve for four years, 2003 to 2007. Mm -hmm. So I've been here, I understand, and I know what we're going through. But what we've seen for the last couple of weeks, three or four weeks, is just not acceptable. That's not Franklin, that's not what we grew up knowing. And I can say that with all candor. I mean, I mean growing up, because other than Two years that I was in the military, I've been in Williamson County and Franklin the rest of my life. If, if you'd like to know how old I am, you take that two and you had 74 that I've been around, you'll get an age of 76. And that's what I am. So uh, it's it's unbelievably disappointing. And I appreciate what was said. I appreciate also uh, what Alderman Hanson had to say also. Uh, but. It, this is this is not Franklin. We don't need this. And we don't want this. And uh, I'm certainly certainly disappointed. Really, really disappointed that all of this has happened. So I, I appreciate the opportunity for kind of saying that. I know I've, we've sent out some emails on some things. All seven of us have signed it along with the mayor. Uh, and I put some things out on my uh, Facebook account that that, that shows my point of view. So look at those if you want to, and but this is this what we've seen for the last two or three weeks, month, six weeks, whatever, is not Franklin. Thank you. And, and thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> well, we're going to go to the consent agenda, and we're going to consider items number eleven through seventeen. All these items on the, on the consent agenda are deemed to be non-controversial and routine in nature by the governing body. They will be approved recommended by committee or staff by one motion of the governing body. So is there a motion? Move for approval. Second. Thank you, Alderman Brown. Second, Alderman Potts. Any discussion? Ready to vote? Vice Mayor? Yes. Alderman Blanton? Yes. Alderman Hanson? Yes. Alderman Peterson? Yes. Alderman Berger? Yes. Alderman Brown? Yes. Alderman Potts? Yes. Passes unanimously. Item number three under old business, consideration ordinance 2023-010, an ordinance to rezone 21.24 acres from plan PD 11.35 for 12,320 district to plan PD 11.35 for 17,320 district for the property located south of Oak Meadow Drive and east of uh, South Royal Oaks Boulevard. Earlier I was told that this was gonna be withdrawn uh, is it? Oh, Greg is here. Applicant? No. 
<laughs> There's a letter attached to this item, an email requesting withdrawal by the applicant, and Greg Gamble is here if you have any questions for the applicant. So no action is required, and we'll continue on. Item uh, four. Did you want to make a statement on this? Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, this is a public hearing consideration ordinance 2023-31 ordinance to rezone 104.07 acres from Civic Institutional District to PD 2007-500 District for the property located south of Mac Hatcher Memorial Parkway and west of Daniel mm. McMahon Drive. Um, this is a rezoning for the EMS facility at the Franklin First Methodist Church. And the next item is the development plan associated with that. Staff recommends approval, as did the Planning Commission. This public hearing is uh, still open to, for comments from the public on the rezoning. Seeing no comments, I'm going to close the public hearing and ask for a motion. Move to approve. Second. Second, <laughs> second by Alderman Blanton. Any discussion? Ready to vote? Mm -hmm. Vice Mayor? Yes. Alderman Blanton? Yes. Alderman Hanson? Yes. Alderman Peterson? Yes. Alderman Berger? Yes. Alderman Brown? Yes. Alderman Potts? Yes. Passes unanimously. We'll now go to public <coughs> hearing uh, concerning resolution 2023-56, a resolution approving a revised development plan for Franklin First United Methodist Church PUD subdivision for the property located south of Mancatcher Memorial Parkway, west of Daniel McMahon Lane, located at 110. Aldersgate Way. Is there anyone who wants to speak to this body? Seeing none, I'm going to close the public hearing. I would entertain a motion. Move to approve. Thank you, Alderman Second. Brown. Second by Alderman Potts. Any discussion? Ready to vote? Vice Mayor? Yes. Alderman Blanton? Yes. Alderman Hanson? Yes. Alderman Peterson? Yes. Alderman Berger? Yes. Alderman Brown? Yes. Alderman Potts? Yes. Passes unanimously. Item 6, this is a public hearing consideration ordinance 2023-28 in ordinance <coughs> free zone. 7.88 acres from Civic Institutional to Residential R4 District with property located south of Battle Avenue and west of Cannon Street, currently addressed as 1406 Cannon Street, 319 Battle Avenue, 401 Battle Avenue, and 403 Battle Avenue. This is a request for a rezoning to residential to the R4 district for property that is currently owned by the Franklin Special School District. Mm -hmm. It is similar to a previous request that was withdrawn, um, but there is one property that was eliminated from the request and they started with a new request. Staff recommends approval, as does the Planning Commission. <clears throat> does anyone want to speak to this body? Seeing none, I declare the public hearing closed. Entertain a motion. Need for approval. Thank you, Alderman Blanton. Second. Second by the Vice Mayor. Any discussion? Just Alderman Brown. want to note that uh, Franklin Special School District is a client of mine, and I'll abstain from this vote. Thank you. Ready to vote? Vice Mayor? Yes. Alderman Blanton? Yes. Alderman Hanson? Yes. Alderman Peterson? Yes. Alderman Berger? Yes. Alderman Brown abstains. Thank you. And Alderman Potts? Yes. Motion passes. Item 7, the public hearing consideration ordinance 2023-34 in order to amend the budget of the City of Franklin for FY 2023-24, second of three readings. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the board, Michael Walters Young, your budget strategic innovation manager. Ordinance 2023-34 is the first budget amendment of the fiscal 24 operating budget. There are three components to this amendment. Number one is the distribution of annual wage increases. Number two are minor corrections on various expense items. And number three are uh, funding of capital projects, which you have given the green light to from July 1 until today. Second, there are two minor organizational and staffing charges attached at the end of the ordinance. The highlights of the amendment covered at Budget and Finance uh, include $2.8 million in distribution of annual wage increases. If you remember, we budget these in general expenses or in a central category of your general fund as well as the other funds and then transfer them in at the beginning of the year once we know exactly what final COLA um, estimates will be made and approved by you as well as merit scores for employees. Capital projects uh, in the um, meetings of this fiscal year include $468,010 for uh, intersection improvements along Carruthers to extend turn lanes, 
uh, $200,000 for Del Rio Pike improvements so that Del Rio could get open faster. Um, I've driven it, as many of you have, and it's, it's, it's a nice thing to be open. Um, $70,000 for Hayes House roof improvements. This will be more, and the memo notifies you of that. The work is in process of being completed. Uh, it will be roughly $30,000 more than this, but this gets the initial amount appropriated. Uh, $700,000 for Liberty Hill stream restoration. That's half from the general fund and half from the stormwater fund. And you've already talked about this during the work session and previous meetings. And then finally, the first $2 million uh, for the preservation of land at Creekside in the North Gateway of Franklin Road and uh, Mac Hatcher. There are roughly $61,000, call it $62,000 in minor corrections. Uh, that were not quite accounted for in the budget when the year was approved in various four departments within the general fund, and the authorization of the purchase of a new Christmas tree for the Christmas tree lighting from the Hotel Motel Fund with roughly just under $54,000. Thank you, Santa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, fund balance changes, as you see on the screen, the general fund, capital projects fund, and wastewater and water and wastewater funds have no change to them. There are decreases on fund balance for sanitation and environmental services of roughly $240,000, the road impact fund of roughly $668,000, stormwater fund of $470,000, and the hotel motel fund of $2.1 million. The vast majority of those decreases come from the capital projects, which I just covered. With that, Mr. Oh. Mayor, happy to stand for any questions that any members may have. <clears throat> Uh, this is public hearing. Is there anyone that wants to comment from the public? If not, I will close the public hearing and uh, entertain a motion. Move to approve. Thank you, Alderman Brown. Second. Second. Alderman Potts. And uh, any discussion or questions from the board? Quickly, uh, how did we get that, that last slide uh, with the uh, decrease of, on the sanitation environmental? How did we get, how did we achieve that? Um, so when final wage increases were distributed, um, we had budgeted an amount within sanitation and they ended up being more than what we had initially Just budgeted. Because we projected That's higher. Yep. Okay. Thanks. That's mm -hmm. it. Any other great, questions great or job. comments? Very succinct. Very good. Ready to vote? Dr. Michael. Vice Mayor. Yes. Alderman Blanton. Yes. Alderman Hansen. Yes. Alderman Peterson. Yes. Alderman Berger. Yes. Alderman Brown. Yes. And Alderman Potts. Yes. Passes unanimously. We're now into new business. Consideration orders 2023-23, an ordinance to rezone 0 0.29 acres from residential R6 district to plan PD 6.06 district on 0.29 acres for the property located at 958 Glass Lane, Hard Bargain 2, PUD subdivision establishing a public hearing on November the 14th. Is there a motion? Thank you. Second. Second by Alderman Potts. Any discussion? Ready to vote? Vice Mayor? Yes. Alderman Blanton? Yes. Alderman Hanson? Yes. Alderman Peterson? Yes. Alderman Berger? Yes. Alderman Brown? Yes. Alderman Potts? Yes. Passes unanimously. Item number nine is Amendment 1 to City of Franklin Contract 2022-0264 with Civil and Environmental Consultants Inc. for the Liberty Hills Pond Stream Restoration. Is there a motion? So Move for approval. Thank you, Alderman Berger. Second. Second. Seconded by Alderman Blanton. Any discussion? Ready to vote? Vice Mayor? Yes. Alderman Blanton? Yes. Alderman Hanson? Yes. Alderman Peterson? Yes. Alderman Berger? Yes. Alderman Brown? Yes. Alderman Potts? Yes. yes. Passes unanimously. Item 10 is Resolution 2023-70, Resolution to authorize the City Administrator to approve Amendment 2 to City of Franklin Contract Number 2014-0289, a local agency project agreement, Agreement Number 140204, with the Tennessee Department of Transportation for the State Route 6 Columbia Avenue from State Route 397 MacHatcher Parkway to Downs Boulevard in Franklin, project number mm -hmm. PIN 121450.00. Can't believe all those numbers. <laughs> <laughs> but I would consider a motion to approve it. So moved. Thank Second. you, Vice Mayor. Second, Alderman Berger. <laughs> Alderman Barnhill, how do you vote? Yes. Alderman Blanton. Yes. Alderman Hanson. Yes. Alderman Peterson. Mm -hmm. Yes. Alderman Berger. Yes. Alderman Brown. Yes. Alderman Potts. Yes. Passes unanimously. Any other business to come before this body? Motion to adjourn. Second. Second by Alderman Berger. All in favor say aye. aye.